is because it's a fictional language. It does not exist. Any indication that the ancient inhabitants of the New World wrote in Hebrew or Egyptian? Categorically, no. No hay ninguna evidencia, no hay ningún rasgo hebreo, no existe en la icono, en el en el dato iconográfico del glifo, no existe ni por la mínima ni la remota idea de un eh, de una escritura hebrea. The claim that the Book of Mormon is Hebrew scripture from this community that migrated, written on metal plates and saying lots of different things, is just impossible at the end of the day. Why don't we just put the gold plates out there for everybody to look at and observe and read for themselves? Uh, we could put them in a, a, a monument over here. We could have the visitor center where you put the gold plates there. And anybody who had any doubts could come and read the Egyptian hieroglyphics there for themselves. Uh, and it, if, if the Book of Mormon were true, that's exactly what we'd be able to do. Uh, we can take and find old uh, texts from the ancient Near East, take the Dead Sea Scrolls. And in fact, you can go to museums and see the Dead Sea Scrolls laid out for everyone to see. Uh, if the Book of Mormon was really what it claimed to be, we could do the same. Both the Bible and the Book of Mormon describe a coinage system. The Bible, for example, mentions many Roman coins being used in the days of Jesus in the first century AD. Uh, the pavement upon which we stand at this moment Upon it, there was a layer of about uh, uh, two to three inches of soil, which included many coins dating back to the first century. How many coins would you say have been found at this site during all of its excavation? Maybe 300, 400. So what are you putting in the bucket there? Coins. Coins, huh? More, more than 10 coins. Oh, really? From one day. One day, ten coins. So those are just the ones that you found yesterday. Yeah. Chapter 11 of the Book of Alma in the Book of Mormon. The chapter heading says, Nephite coinage set forth. Then it goes through and describes how the, the money system of the Book of Mormon worked. Now, if we take these images of coins we find in the Book of Mormon, and contrast them to the systems of exchange in place in ancient America, we find that they're not at all alike. There were no metallic coins being used. The Book of Mormon just flat has it wrong. In all your excavating, you haven't found any coins um, that would predate the coming of the Europeans? Nothing. In fact, metallic coins were not in use in any part of ancient America. We didn't use coins. We didn't have them. We took coins when they first came, which were not until Europeans came around, and we usually kind of flattened them out and made them into jewelry. Yeah, that's what we did too. <laughs> yeah. So the question that arises is where are all the Nephite coins that were in use for almost a thousand years? I don't think that there might be a situation when all the coins of a certain civilization or a certain uh, authority would disappear without uh, leaving a mark. The Bible gives an account of numerous battles and wars throughout the history of the Israelites. Like, do they find things like spearheads and and things like that. When this country, for example, passed the uh, Assyrian conquest, we have the uh, arrowheads uh, which landed upon the roofs of the buildings uh, before they got destroyed. So we have uh, first the layer of the arrowheads and then we have the layer of the floors. Before the biblical period, we have evidence of uh, arrowheads that were used by the Babylonians and we have arrowheads that were used by the locals and we have arrowheads that were used by the Assyrians. The footnotes in the Book of Mormon suggest that the Lamanite extermination of the Nephites took place around 400 AD. Yet it left no archaeological evidence. By contrast, a much smaller battle that happened centuries earlier in the first century AD in Palestine demonstrates what one can expect to find if a battle like the one described in the Book of Mormon had really occurred. Uh, we have uh, Flavius Josephus telling us about a rock, an isolated rock in the desert uh, named Masada. 
he mentions about 900 uh, uh, people being up there besieged by the Romans and committing suicide. The place was identified, it was excavated in 1960s and we have the skeletal remains, we have the houses, we have the coins, so we have a very clear evidence for the uh, uh, very tragic events which took place at Masada through archaeology. No civilization can be wiped out in such a way that uh, no remnant of it uh, is left. The Book of Ether and the Book of Mormon, especially chapter 15, describes a, a massive war in which it reports there had been slain two millions of mighty men, also their wives and children. Where are these steel swords that led to the massacres of millions? Where are the, the bodies, the remains, the skeletons? of these millions of people. Where, where's the evidence of this ancient catastrophe? We don't find it. We don't find it in Central America. We don't find it near Hilcomora in New York. It simply didn't happen. Centuries later, the Lamanite nation is said to have destroyed the Nephite nation in another massive battle at the same hill, Cumorah. Well, growing up Mormon, I was always taught that uh, the Hill Kamara was the location of the culminating events of the Book of Mormon. Mormon chapter 8 uh, verse 2 and now it came to pass that after the great and tremendous battle at Cumorah behold the Nephites who had escaped into the country southward were hunted by the Lamanites until they were all destroyed. It uh, goes on to make an accounting of how many people approximately were, were killed and it mentions them in tens of thousands each time when you add it all up, it's at least 230,000 people. We thought it was a bad thing when we would lose 12 people. You know, then it was like, because you had 12 families in deep mourning. I grew up in western New York, and the uh, study that I chose was anthropology and archaeology because of my interest in trying to help prove uh, that the Book of, Book of Mormon was correct. As we were told at that time that, that science would prove the church was true. I did do archaeological work in the Palmyra area. If there were big battles in the in the masses that they talked about, uh, we would have expected to find things that would be indicative to those big battles: uh, mass burial sites, human remains, a bone. You know, bone lasts very well. There have been no steel swords found, no chariot parts. When we talk about Mm, warfare weapons. We are basically talking about uh, stone tools. Habían armas cortopunzantes, pero de obsidiana y de pedernal, pero nada armas de metales de ninguna naturaleza. Whenever they find in Israel a biblical site, they always excavate it. So why doesn't the LDS Church uh, excavate the Hill Cumorah? It would be a grand embarrassment to do that and not find a single thing. And do you think that's what they would find? Uh, I'm, I'm confident that they would find nothing. Have you ever done any uh, archaeological excavations on the Hill Cumorah? They have. What, have they found anything? No. The LDS Church, of course, owning much of this property, could do the investigations. But they know from the little bit they have done, and they know from what's been done by others, the evidence isn't there. So it's obvious why they don't excavate. Uh, because if they did, all it would do is disprove uh, their faith claims. We are here next to the uh, western wall of the Temple Mount, or the Wailing Wall, as it is sometimes called. The wall itself is approximately 2,020 years old. This wall was built by Harold the Great.